because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's the morning after. Um, I'm joined by Jermaine Franklin. Jermaine, first of all, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know. Uh, nothing, nothing's wrong. Yeah, just uh, a little disappointed in performance, but other than that, I'm feeling good. Let's kind of talk about um, your performance and then we'll come on to, to Joshua. So, what specifically were you disappointed about in your own performance? I uh, kind of lost my cool, was getting frustrated a lot. And, um, once I got frustrated, kind of just took away from the game plan. So, um, yeah, I kind of took myself out the fight. Let's talk about kind of the first six rounds of that. How did you think that was going um, between one, rounds one and six? It, for yourself? Uh, I think I was up for it too, honestly, uh, in my opinion. You know, other people might not feel that way, but in my opinion, I was uh, landing more significant shots. He probably threw more power shots, but I was landing more punches, more clean cut punches, uh, getting the jab off better. And, uh, you know, I was slipping. I was slipping a, a decent amount of punches, so I feel like I was a little more in control the first six rounds. There was uh, an expectancy of Anthony Joshua from his perspective and his side to stop you, to knock you out. I'm sure you would have seen the comments from that all, all week. But you have proved for the second time in the UK in back-to-back -back fights that that's not an easy thing to do when it comes to yourself. I mean, like I tell everybody, I got a heart of steel and I got a big will. You know, that's not something you, easy to break. You have to really come take it from me. It's not like a... I'm not no pushover or nothing like that. Uh, people think I might just be a tune-up fighter or a warm-up, but that's it's nothing like that. In those last three rounds, um, did you feel Anthony Joshua obviously fighting more offensively in order to try and kind of almost force that knockout? Uh, yeah, he tried to um, he tried to turn it up a little bit, but uh, you know, as a fighter, you you see opportunities, you try to take them. Uh, I think he probably thought he had me hurt more than what I actually was, but um, it was a couple of times where he tried to step it up. How did you assess his power? Um, he got some pop, um, you know, compared to what people was like uh, talking about him. You know, I don't know, it's probably just me, no disrespect to him. I, I just got a chin, but um, he, he got some pop. It wasn't like where I was scared of him or anything, you know. I, I could sit there and trade, but it wasn't no power to make me fear getting hit. And how did you feel about the success uh, in moments that you were having in that fight as well? Um, I was feeling good, you know, but from, from what I've seen, they, they had it all painted for him. So, you know, we know how boxing goes. I see a lot of people had their opinions on the referee and how he was. I was like, what was your thoughts on the ref? Honestly, uh, he was pissing me off. Uh, honestly, uh, that's kind of the reason I was getting frustrated because I'm like... <laughs> Some of this shit is blatant. Like, you can blatantly see it. I was getting collar tied and stiff armed, and, and the ref, it was pissing me off because the ref was on the side that it was happening on sometimes. So, I don't know if you guys can see, but a couple times I just didn't even try to wrestle. I just lift my arms and looking at the ref. I'm like, come on now, I'm sitting here complaining about this. You're not saying nothing. And then you like watching them do it. And when I do say something, you say you don't see it. But tell me that I'm getting grabbed because I'm, slip I'm slipping inside. That don't give him the right to grab me. He's supposed to bag up or reposition himself. So it was just, yeah, I, I let the ref uh, kind of frustrate me and take me out my game plan. It was like I was fighting two people in there. There were a couple of uh, incidents that kind of occurred after. Obviously, one notable between yourself and, and Anthony Joshua after the fight. What was your take on actually what happened? Um, he said it was in uh, the heat of passion, but you know, um, I, we all fighters. So during the, during the fight, yeah, I can understand. But after the fight, he was still trying to keep the tough shit up. You know, um, like I told him, like you you don't know nothing about me. So you know, um, we exchanged a, a little bit of words. But you know, uh, I was actually on my way to his corner to shake their hands and stuff. And he turned around trying to be all macho and shit. So that's really kind of how it escalated. You know, but. Uh, it is what it is, it's, you know, it's boxing. We all be heated at wartime, you know, so uh, I don't take too much from him, but, you know, we really we really could have got into that because, you know, I ain't, I ain't nothing soft over here. We really could have got into that without them gloves on. So 
you know, um, I'm just glad that it didn't turn into, you know, it got prevented before all that concluded. I mean, it, it was. I've had to watch that a few times back because I kind of missed it on the night. But he seemed to have kind of got you into an embrace, like with his arm around you, and then yeah, he was trying to talk shit. Like, see, that's what I thought it was. Cause I really couldn't hear him at first, but he was, uh, he was, he was trying to talk a little shit about like some words we had exchanged during the fight. So, uh, yeah, after I, after I really understood what he was saying, I, you know, and I reacted to it. But at first, I really didn't know what he was saying. So, um, yeah, like I thought, like I thought, like he was doing, like I was gonna go over there to do, like uh, come say good fight or you know what I'm saying some shit like that. But uh, it was, it turned out to be something else. But yeah, at the end, of all that he was trying to say it was some uh, in the heat of the passion, like in the heat of the moment type shit. But you know, it's after the fight's over now, so I really didn't understand it. Did you speak to him after that, after you guys left the ring? Did you cross paths in the dressing rooms or anything? No, No, we didn't cross paths or nothing like that. Uh, I was pissed. I was just ready to get up out of there. And also, I know this didn't have anything directly to do with you, but it was another instance with your trainer and, and Tony Bellew, uh, who was at, at ringside. Do you know anything more about that? Because, again, we've only seen like clips, and if you're around ringside, we kind of caught a little bit. I couldn't really hear what Tony was saying, but he was just hating the whole night before we even came out there. We seen him on uh, on the TV talking to um, talking to um, Dylan White and stuff, and he was just throwing shade the whole time. You know what I'm saying? I understand you from England, these your guys and all that shit, but he was just throwing shade. So I don't know. He might have said something that pissed Coach off while he was down there, because I, I know he was throwing shade. If he was throwing shade like that, I know he was throwing shade on the commentary. So you know, uh, it'd be a all. All of it be a, a reaction type thing, you know, it'd be a lot of emotions flying in fight time. Okay, um, just finally, Jermaine, obviously, um, obviously, two um, high profile fights for you here in the UK, so stock wise, profile wise, that's gone up. This is surely going to present opportunities for you to kind of get yourself back into the mix, um, especially here in the UK. There's, I'm sure, there's a whole host of heavyweight fights available. Um, I mean, Heavyweight fights could look at that in whatever perspective they want. They might think you're a bit of a nightmare to fight, and that that could work against you as well. I, I love to fight over here. I love the England fans, but I wouldn't fight nobody English over here again. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to me or my career because I I can kind of see like how the road goes. You know, uh, it's up to me to be able to fight under any circumstances. But you know, um, I won't want to put that type of pressure on myself again. You you know, if the if the right opportunity you know, presents itself, then I'll do it. But I'd rather fight somebody from English on neutral soil. It don't even have to be America. It just got to be somewhere where we all going to get treated equally, you know. Outside of that, you know, I'll, I'll fight some Americans or somebody else over here, you know. No problem. We're fighting over here. But, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got I to gotta leave the England guys alone over here. It's not where it's at. And, and is Joshua fight still in right, possibly, next? Who wins that as you've... In kind of a, a mutual opponent, there's. I think Joshua would be white. You know, uh, I don't. I don't think that'd be no hard fight for Joshua. Like I told people, it's, it was a little harder for Joshua to to, to punch me because it's harder for bigger guys to punch down than it is for shorter guys to punch up. But you know, uh, when you're taller, some of those shots are easier to get off. So, yeah, I, I think Joshua beats Dylan. Okay, Jermaine, listen, I much appreciate your time. Uh, this early Sunday afternoon. Um, I'm going to uh, let you get on with the rest of your day. So safe travels back to the US. Have you got anything else you'd like to add? Um, you know, I'm still here. I'm, uh, I'm coming back. Don't forget about me. This ain't the last time y'all going to see me. We look forward to it. Jermaine Franklin, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, they're guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 